Merry Christmas. My name is Sanford Groff. I'm the rector here at Good Shepherd Episcopal Church and School in beautiful Tequesta, Florida. Thank you so much for joining us for this live stream service this Christmas season. To follow along with the bulletin, you can check out our website or even uh, scan this QR code and it'll pop right up on a phone or tablet device. We'd love to stay connected with you and you can give us a call, send us an email, leave us a comment, like, or even subscribe to our YouTube channel. We would love to get to know you a bit better as we continue to do this work that God has given us to do. Thank you so much for your generosity this Christmas season. Check out our giving page for more information about how you might participate in the financial health and stewardship of this place. And if you're traveling this Christmas season, we certainly wish you safe travels as you come back home after your time away. Christmas, of course, is not just a day, but actually an entire season, 12 days to be exact, starting liturgically with Christmas Eve, one of our biggest days of the year. And we are grateful for this season in which God draws near to us in Jesus Christ, born in the manger. I pray that Jesus would be born in your heart again this year, so that you and your loved ones might gather together and give God thanks for all the blessings of this abundant life. Our service will begin in just a moment. Oh, come, let us adore him.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And be God Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have caused this holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that we who have known the mystery of that light on earth may also enjoy him perfectly in heaven, where with you and the Holy Spirit he lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. 
For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter to Titus. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age, to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the, first, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly... There was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into Bethlehem, into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. seated. Merry Christmas. Welcome to Good Shepherd Episcopal Church and School. My name is Sanford Groff. I'm the very, very new green rector here, so any complaints can just go right to the associate who is ready to handle all of your questions and queries, but welcome. Welcome to those we cannot see, but who can see us through the camera lens. It is great to have you from wherever you are on the live stream. Welcome to you. Welcome to you if you're here week after week, one of our regulars, and you have had to give up your typical seat tonight. Don't worry, it'll be free and open next week when you come back. Welcome to you if you came here early just to scope out that perfect pew that you're now sitting in, which it looks like was in the back. So welcome to you. Welcome to you if this is your first time, maybe this will be your last time here at Good Shepherd. 
For those first timers, I too am new around here, and so I would love to be new with you together. Welcome to you. Welcome, Merry Christmas, and Happy Easter to our distinguished CEOs, our Christmas and Easter only parishioners this night. We are very, very grateful for you to be here as well. Welcome to you. Welcome to you if you're sitting next to someone who might be a little more fidgety than you had hoped. Welcome to you if you're sitting next to someone who's way too churchy than what you had hoped. Welcome to you if you've got everything done and you can just really sit back and truly be present in this spiritual moment. And welcome to you if you're still running through your mental checklist in your head, remembering all the things that you still have left to do this night. Welcome to you. Welcome to you if this is Christmas as it has always been, as you've always remembered it, and shall be forever and ever if you had any say in the matter. And welcome to you if this is a Christmas that happens to be coming at the end of a pretty challenging year. Welcome. Whatever brings you here tonight, we are so happy to have you at Good Shepherd. Good Shepherd has a place for you, after all. And we hope that you will be filled with all the wonder that Christmas brings. Welcome to you. Merry Christmas. That is not the end of the sermon. The sermon begins now. Welcome to you who's looking at their watch. Good. This, <clears throat> don't worry. This past summer, uh, we, took a, we took a trip to Scotland, and it was my first time in Scotland. We traveled via train up to Edinburgh from London. Arriving at the train station, we went over to our rental car place, picking it up, and realizing that there was almost a three-hour drive ahead of us up to Speyside, uh, and it was going to be much different than any driving I had ever done here in the States. I, of course, uh, was the driver, and um, one word kept ringing in my ears, left, left, left. I was pulling out of the car parking garage there at the car rental place. Everything was left. Why is everything left? The wheel was on the left side of the car. We drove on the left side of the road. And let's not even start talking about those pesky roundabouts where all you do is circle to the left, around and around and around as the GPS yells at you to take the next left. It took an immense amount of concentration, but we got out of Edinburgh just fine. Beyond the city limits, the roads became a bit smaller. No multi-lane I-95 highways here. Just roads that uh, were, were marked as major routes, but only had two lanes in one direction that eventually became one lane in each direction. But then, about an hour into our journey, I saw something foreboding. Something foreboding and relatively familiar to me a white and black road sign with an old school camera logo on it. No words, just camera. Not good, I thought, having had my own history with speed cameras in both Italy and Baltimore, having had to pay tickets there. I paid them, I can still drive legally there. I immediately slowed down. Where is the speed limit sign, I said, looking intently at every sign that was whizzing past me. At this point, we were on a country road, one lane in either direction, simply divided by a yellow line. A glance in the rear view mirror, this one over here on the left, <laughs> uh, revealed a line of cars that had accumulated behind me. My heart started racing. What is the speed limit? I started to speed up. 50 to 60 miles an hour, seeing if I was going to be going the right speed based upon how close the cars behind me were keeping up with. The cars behind me being just as aggressive as I increased. 65, I kept creeping up. Behind me still, there they were, almost 70 miles an hour. As we came around a bend, another camera sign. Thankfully, a second lane opened up and cars went speeding by us. It was so strange. When they wouldn't those cars speeding by us be getting picked up by these speed cameras? There are no speed limit signs anywhere. How does anyone in this country know how fast to drive? Well, we made it. I didn't get a speeding ticket, by the way. That's not where this is going. Different place. The next day, we had arranged for a tour guide to pick us up in a van to take us around. 
After some introductory pleasantries, I broached the subject. How do, how do, you, know, how do you know the speed limit in this country, I asked, trying not to show any judgment, but as you could tell, I had it. Oh, there's a national speed limit. 60, 60 on these roads, 70 on the double lane roads. Oh, there's a sign right there, he said, pointing to a small black and white circle that had a, si a simple diagonal slash through it. No numbers. That's the national speed limit sign, I said, without a number on it? He chuckled. Yeah, it doesn't need a number. Everyone knows the national speed limit, right? With a smirk and a glint in his eye. Of course we don't all know the national speed limit of Scotland, especially when it's not your nation that you happen to be visiting. Now, you're probably wondering where this is going. That's a good, good thought. Hang in there, just for a second. I bet, I bet that's how the shepherds felt a little bit when this angel showed up. Because when the angel rolled up and interrupted their regularly scheduled activity, the angel said, and this will be a sign to you. This will be a sign to you. The fearful shepherds whose whole world is about to be turned upside down. And what is this sign, of course? Why, it is a baby lying in a manger. A manger. Now, remember a manger? is not a five-star Amazon-reviewed baby crib, but a feeding trough for animals. Imagine, imagine an angel showing up in this day and age to you and saying, and this will be the sign for you, a babe on the buffet of the Golden Corral. <laughs> go, go to go to Golden Corral and see the babe that is laying on the buffet, or a babe in the slop bucket for the pigs if you're more of a farmer or something like this. It's a bewildering statement, even more so than these weird numberless signs in Scotland, and yet in this simple interaction, the shepherds are alerted to the sign that they are to seek, and they set out, they set out on their quest to find it. The story we hear tonight that Father Derek read so eloquent for, eloquently for us has become so familiar to us that a lot of us just take it for granted. Of course we think the shepherds are going to find Jesus in the manger. Away in the manger, it says, as we sing over and over again. And yet, what the shepherds probably experienced those couple of thousand years ago was in fact quite confusing and quite chaotic. The sign for them was not familiar. It was not traditional. They had to trust that the angel was getting it right and that they would, they would recognize it, that their eyes would be open when they saw it. A very weird sign indeed. But isn't God so often like that? God's spirit moving in our lives at the least expected moments. Maybe tonight, if you're being honest with yourself, maybe tonight you're yearning for a sign from God. Something that will help you get through whatever it is that is heavy on your heart. Maybe, maybe this Christmas feels different. Maybe you're not in the mood for visions of sugar plums dancing in your head. And that's okay. Because in this Christmas, God comes near to you too. Regardless of how we feel tonight, God is always at work healing a world that continues to break and fraction apart. God is restoring the lost and raising up those who have been cast down. The story of Jesus is of God coming near to us to do something new in our day and age. New, maybe for the first time in our lives or maybe new for the thousandth time in our lives. And this will be a sign to you, our own angels seem to whisper. Probably, probably not in the power or in the prestige that so many of us seek. It's, it's not going to show up in the riches or the security that the world promises and provides. It's probably not even in the traditional places necessarily, as much as it pains me to admit that as a priest in the very traditional Episcopal church. God will come not when we expect God the most, but when we need God the most. 
The signs before us will take us by surprise and yet will inspire us to glory and praise of God that we never knew we had in us, even as traditional Episcopalians. Jesus' is coming into the world changes everything. Jesus' is coming into the world changes everything. Not because he will give us everything we want, but because he will abide with us through everything we need. And here's the really miraculous thing. Here's the, the, the phenomenal surprise at the end of it all. When God comes close to you and to me, when, when we are touched by God in those amazing, surprising, mysterious moments, we, we are changed. We are changed to begin to see the world as God sees us, with eyes of love. Because you are loved by God. You are loved dearly by God. And when you are loved by God, everything, the whole world starts to look different. It it looks a bit brighter. Everything has something about it that becomes a bit bit more lovable, a bit more tolerable, a bit easier. When, when, When we are loved by God, God puts everything back in the right perspective for you and for me. And this will be a sign to you. God's signs are all around us. May our eyes be opened this Christmas by the light of Christ who has come into the world to behold the very mangers in our midst, the signs of God's love. Merry Christmas to all, and may the joy of Christ's coming be born in your heart again. Amen. We stand as we say the Nicene Creed together. We believe in one God. With glad and joyful hearts, let us offer our prayers unto Almighty God. Gracious God, as a star rose and drew people from great distances to Bethlehem, that they might greet the Christ child, draw us, your church, and all of your people to you, that we might be the church and the people 
who you call us to be. Lord, in your mercy, as you gave Mary your Holy Spirit, filling her with the delight of your presence, fill us with your spirit and renew our lives. Lord, in your mercy, as Gentiles stream to Jesus' light and kings to the brightness of his rising, draw our nation, our president, and all in authority to his brightness, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Lord, in your mercy, as angels sang praise to you and proclaimed the peace on earth, and goodwill among all peoples, bring us your peace and bring an end to all terror and strife. Lord, in your mercy. As shepherds were drawn away from their flocks by night to see the newborn king, draw those who do not know you yet to the knowledge and love of you. Lord, in your mercy. As Jesus was born in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn, be especially present with those who have nowhere to lay their head, those who are vulnerable, and those who are hungry. Lord, in your mercy. As the Holy Family gathered together in Bethlehem and traveled together to far-off lands, Bless all families, especially the families of our parish, and protect those who travel. Lord, in your mercy, as your Son came to proclaim the forgiveness of sins and the gift of life eternal, give to the departed eternal rest, and let life perpetual shine on them. Lord, in your mercy, let us pray for our own needs and those of others. O oh Lord our God, may the light and hope of this night and of your Son's incarnation reassure our hearts that you are among us, that you hear our prayer, and that you will be with us always, even to the end of the age. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. You may be seated. And again, a warm welcome to Good Shepherd Episcopal Church and School. It's great to have you tonight. I do want to just uh, quickly offer a few thank yous to everyone who has made this night possible. A special thank you to Father Derek Larson, an excellent priest and pastor who for the last two years has been uh, holding this place down solo. Well done. Thank you. To all of the incredible staff here, especially uh, Mary Casili, Joe Wood, Mary Lou Crifasi, Evelyn Seely, Beth Long, and Heather Vaughn, they are an incredible team to work with. Our incredible volunteers who helped to decorate the altar guild, led by Jeannie Pouillard uh, and our scheduler Karen Rupar, our vergers, our ushers, the chalices, the acolytes, Eric at the sound camera and light board, boards over there, thank you for helping make this night possible and for all of the hard work that went into it. And also thank you to our wonderful musicians, uh, to our instrumentalists, our choir, to uh, Peter Karras, uh, and of course, Debbie White and Tim Johnson Reynolds. It's great to have you and thank you for sharing your gift of music with all of us. And finally, thank you. Uh, thank you for taking time and joining us this Christmas to be with us. We love having you here. 
So many of you are connected to Good Shepherd Church and school in one way or another, and we are grateful. Thank you also for your generosity this night. As you give of yourselves, we give back to one another and to the community as a whole. Your gifts this month alone have gone to bring Christmas toys to families at Jupiter Elementary, Christmas dinner and foodstuffs to over 200 individuals in our local area, clothes, furniture, and collectible items through our Pennies from Heaven thrift shop, and then all the ways in which we support those in grief for whom this can be an especially difficult time of the year. Thank you. Uh, thanks to you and the myriad of ways you share yourself with us, the spirit of Christmas is alive and well at Good Shepherd for the over 800 people who will celebrate Christmas here in person and the many hundreds who will join us virtually online. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It is clear that Christ has drawn near this Christmas. Merry Christmas. And now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who, by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit, was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. We offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
gifts of God for the people of God. Before you're seated, just a quick announcement or uh, some instructions for Holy Communion. You can come to the rail and stand or kneel, and then if you'd like to receive the bread in kind, it's fine. You don't have to take the wine, but if you'd like the wine, you can either sip out of the the common chalice or the sipping chalice, or if you'd like it to be intincted, Father Derek and I will intinct it for you in the intinction chalice and then hand the bread and the wine soaked on the bread back to you. If you'd like that, just cross your or just fold your hands like this, and we'll know uh, that you'd like the bread dipped for you. After you've received, then uh, when you're heading back to your seat, if you'll pick up a candle on either side for Silent Night, which we'll sing together at the end of communion. So make sure you grab your candle on the way back, and the acolytes will be bringing the, the candles around to light them. Remember uh, from physics class that we always tip our unlit candle. We never tip the lit candle so the wax falls onto the pews. We tip the unlit candle, so remember to tip, tip your unlit candle toward the flame and then hold your candle upright once it's lit. You may be seated and come to God's table.
invite you to kneel as the candle flame comes around as you tip your unlit candle and we sing Silent Night. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent his Son to take our nature upon him, bless you this holy season, scatter the darkness of sin, and brighten your heart with the light of his holiness. Amen. May God, who sent his angels to proclaim the, the glad news of the Savior's birth, 
fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. Amen. May God, who in the word made flesh joined heaven to earth and earth to heaven, give you his peace and favor. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.